Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and with us in the green room, of course, is your incredible co-host, Bobby Farish. So if you are a follower of this channel, you know that we are having some tech issues with some Google stuff, and I sort of spent the last week or so and enlisted a colleague and um, have tried to uh, find an alternative, and we are not able to really find an alternative at this point. So we're just gonna stick to what we know. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are an adult survivor of childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse, you are in the right place. We love to show up here every week and answer your very real questions about the recovery process uh, through recovering from childhood abuse, even childhood sexual abuse. So my esteemed colleague, Bobby Parrish, and I, we uh, we started this YouTube channel, just a little backstory, um, of about a year and a half to two years ago, just as sort of a project to kind of see if there was a need, and we've proven the concept with you our incredible community of survivors. We started off with just a few girls in a Twitter chat, and here we are uh, less than two years later, and we are helping survivors and sharing a message of hope and healing in 64 countries. And we have virtual, online, uh, globally accessible safe groups where survivors come and heal in safety free from predators. And this is just our way of wanting to uh, leave a footprint on this planet for healing and good for the survivor community and um, Bobby will I'm sure go into greater detail on this but I'm very happy to announce that we do have um, set up and ready to um, move forward a, a co-ed group uh, for adult survivors so that will be a group where males and females come and heal in safety together and then branching off of that I'm sure will be a male group at some point we really have a deep need to make a huge difference in the male survivor community so shout out to all the men out there you guys are brave and incredible and we just are in awe of your courage and we want to encourage you even more so Moving right along, I want to welcome you if you if this is your very first time and you've never been to one of our live broadcasts. We show up here every week on Mondays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. We answer your questions. We have a topic every week. And you can tweet us by using the hashtag no more shame. You can also email us your questions at no more shame project at gmail.com. If you are listening or viewing on a podcast platform such as iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or even iHeartRadio, we want to remind you this is a video broadcast and invite you over to our Roku television channel, um, which can be found on any Roku device and or on our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com forward slash trauma recovery university TV. And as always, as we do every single week, there is a complimentary one-page downloadable resource on tonight's topic. You can access that for free just as a thank you for being a loyal listener or one of our awesome subscribers or just a survivor. We are just grateful for you that you've showed up. You can get access to that by going to one of our uh, websites, traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com. You'll see a tab that says downloadables. When you click on that, you will be given immediate access to not only tonight's downloadable resource, but our entire library, over 100 hours of videos, as well as, as 100, almost 100 one-page downloadable resources. So again, that's traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com. If this video ends up helping you or someone you know, please give it a thumbs up. Please like the video, share it, um, and leave some comments below. Let us know um, how we can best support you. We love serving you, the survivor community. So what is tonight's topic? Tonight, we are going to be unpacking the topic of moving from survivor to thriver in your recovery journey. Moving from survivor to thriver, 
uh, is it's not a linear process. We, we hear these buzzwords um, on, on, in the community sometimes. Uh, we hear the word victim and it makes us cringe. We don't want to be considered a victim. Um, we, there are some buzz phrases such as, we are not what happened to us, we want to find our voice, et cetera, et cetera. We are here to just to support you and to help you on your recovery journey in any way we possibly can. So I'm going to hand this over to my partner, Bobby Parrish. She's going to issue a trigger warning, give out all of her very pertinent information for if you're tuning in from a specific country. And I just want to let you know right now that if you're tuning in on a replay and you don't want to listen to everyone's questions that were asked and you only want to view the one page downloadable, go all the way down in the description section of this video to the bottom just before the comments, click on the number and you'll fast forward through everything. However, I say that tentatively because oftentimes the light bulb moments that happen in our recovery are through a question that was asked by someone besides you. So welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's Moving from Survivor to Thriver. Take it away, Bobby. Hey everybody! I just posted on the um, Twitter Twitter stream. Twitter stream. <laughs> wow! Mouth, tongue work together. Um, we are talking about having a conference this fall, and so I posted some possible dates on the Twitter stream under the No More Shame hashtag. And look at those. And if you have a vote or a preference, let us know. We're talking about having it here in Dallas. And so would you come? If so, which one of those dates would you like? So let us know, give us some feedback before we set some things in concrete. Um, yes, trigger warning, big trigger warning for tonight's video. Um, we will be talking about childhood abuse. We will be talking about childhood sexual abuse. So please exercise excellent self-care tonight. And if you need to take a break, or just completely walk away, please do. Um, if you're watching this on a replay or listening to it on a podcast and you get triggered, just go ahead and shut it down and walk away. We don't want you to listen to this and um, be upset while you're listening. We want this to be something that builds you up and something that gives you hope and gives you information that you need to work forward in your recovery. So, um, within a matter of a couple hours after the broadcast, everything's loaded up to YouTube. It's on our Roku TV channel, and you can come back anytime and listen to the rest of it. There are transcripts as well um, that are done by our lovely assistant, Harriet, that will be on YouTube. So if watching it um, is too hard for you, then you can read the transcript. Um, if you are in crisis or you need help urgently, we encourage you, if you're in the US or Canada, to reach out to our friends at RAIN. That is the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. And they have a toll-free 1-800 hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. They also have a crisis chat feature on their website, RAIN, R-A-I-N-N dot org. If you are in the UK or Ireland, you can reach out to the Samaritans and they are at, I have to look here. You would think I would have that memorized, wouldn't you? 116123. They also have local offices that you can go into or you can connect with them via email and email joe at samaritans.org. If you are in Australia, and you're in crisis or you need help urgently, the national crisis hotline there is 131114. So those are the uh, hotlines and crisis numbers that we have for the country where the majority of our community is right now. We know that's growing. We know that's changing. Um, uh, last we checked, it was 64 countries. So as we have more people join from more countries and numbers go up, we'll give you more crisis numbers. So um, again, as Athena said, tonight's topic is how to move from survivor to thriver. And um, it's a three-step model, a really simple model that is often shared within the survivor and the helping professional the survivor helping professional community. So therapists, clergy, psychologists, people who work with survivors. 
and it's a three-step process. The first one is victim, the second stage is survivor, and the third stage is thriver. So we're gonna unpack all that and describe to you what the different stages mean and share with you um, how to move from survivor to thriver because we're, we're hoping that all of you are out of the victim stage. Um, the victim stage is when you are being actively abused, whether that's sexually, um, physically, emotionally, verbally. Of course, we can always be re-traumatized, but that doesn't change our survivor status from our childhood abuse. So um, we are going to talk a little bit about that more in a minute or two and put up the one page. But first, I want to touch bases with Athena and see if there are any questions or comments. We have lots of comments. I want to just say, um, I just want to say hello to everyone. Hi, Kalisha. Um, Lindy, we're so happy to see you. Phoenix, Matt, Laura, rar, it's Laura, we love you. Matt, Jack, um, and Laugh, Love, Inspire, we are so happy to see you. We have missed your face. Um, we have so many other people. Dominique, um, uh, Mary Irish Girl, August, uh, we have so many people here. Hi, Kate. Jen, just Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, Allie. Maggie. Maggie, we were so excited to receive your correspondence, and we're going to be responding to you. Bobby and I already discussed that. Hi, Sarah. I'm sorry you're not sleeping, but we're really always excited to see you. Um, and Bird Rogue. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I'm leaving people out. You guys, we have such an incredible community. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. You are the reason we show up every week. Um, there are some yeses and yays, and I will definitely be there at the event. And we have some, I don't think that's going to be possible to scrape up the money to be there. But either way, you will be missed, and we will do our very best to make sure this is available virtually so that you actually have a virtual experience of the event, um, at the very least uh, video um, that will be able to be purchased for a lesser price after the fact. So if you can't attend live, ask about prices for purchasing the uh, resources that will be um, downloadable on video, PDF, maybe a workbook, we're still putting it all together, you guys. So, um, but what we do know for sure is that you, our community, has shared with us in um, every medium possible, whether it be email, Facebook, direct message, Twitter, YouTube comment, um, speak pipe message, you name it. You've communicated with us that what you want the most is to be in face-to-face -face contact and in the same room with other survivors that you can connect with. So we are doing our best to provide you with everything you've asked for. We are just a couple of girls on our laptops over here, and we're making a whole lot of progress, but things take time. So thank you for communicating your needs. We are going to do the very best we can, and um, I don't have any questions regarding tonight's topic, although Phoenix is <clears throat> sitting up straighter and ready to tackle tonight's topic, and I know that a lot of people are... Um, saying the same. So tonight's topic of moving from survivor to thriver is one that is very encouraging. And while it is very encouraging, our community, if you are here on this channel, you're an adult survivor of child abuse, probably childhood sexual abuse. We always find some way to shame ourselves during every topic. We find ourselves in a place where we wish we were farther along, so we shame ourselves for not being farther along. So I just want to say preemptively ahead of time, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. You're doing the yes. hard work. Yes. You're, yes. yes, you're doing the hard work. You are here. You are here right now watching this video. And so that means that you are in the process of moving from survivor to thriver. And even if you are currently being abused right now, you care enough about your recovery that you Googled something and clicked on something and you're doing the hard work by sitting here, uh, risking getting triggered, risking having a flashback and doing the hard work so that you can actually recover and live a life of wholeness. You want peace. You want joy. So anything that any lies or old tapes that are going to be chattering in your head back here on repeat, 
I'm, I'm just going to, I want to silence them right now. And I want to tell you that you're going to try to find 14 ways to shame yourself because you're not as thriving as you want to be. And I'm telling you right now that you're doing great. You're doing great. I am over here throwing confetti and glitter, celebrating you and telling you I'm proud of you. You're awesome. I want to encourage you. This community has pulled together to lift each other up and you all are amazing. You're the, you're the reason this community even exists. So please, please, please do your best to remember our voices telling you how proud we are of you rather than those voices that are going to be back here telling you that you should be farther along or I, I didn't do good yesterday or I was, I was here a year ago and I'm still here right now. I should be farther along. Is, before you start shooting yourself all over the place, please step back and go, there could be a reason that you're in the place you're at right now. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. There are no accidents. You are here for a reason and for a purpose. And we are so happy you're here exactly where you're at in your recovery journey. So I'm going to step off my soapbox now and digress. <laughs> Bobby? I think that's so interesting because just earlier, Sarah and I were talking about um, how quickly my our minds go down that path. I was talking about feeling anxious about tonight's broadcast because last week did not go well for me <laughs> with all the technical issues. No, it and did within that, we missed you a lot. <laughs> Don't ever with do that to me again, please. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> wasn't my choice. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Bad joke. Bad joke. So bad funny joke. because, in a heartbeat, I mean, in a just a flash, my mind went from feeling anxious about tonight's broadcast to beating myself up because I was feeling anxious. And it was like, wow, that didn't take any time at all, you know, for me to go from, I feel anxious about this to what in the world is wrong with me? Why am I feeling anxious? I should not feel anxious. I'm far enough in my recovery along not to feel anxious about these things anymore. So um, those rutted paths in our minds they're deep and um so sarah and i talked about putting a barricade up that said do not enter so um i gotta work on that one do not enter do not <laughs> enter i love that yes yes or road closed or something you know uh -huh. detour <laughs> yes yes take the new path take the new path you know heaven knows we have all worked so hard to create new healthy paths in our brains. And, um, but we also recognize that sometimes when we're tired, when we're stressed, when we're triggered, we can go down those old paths um, in just seconds flat. But that, you know what the important thing is? And I'll tell you the most important thing is, when that happens, it's that you realize it and you move over to the new and healthy road, okay? Um, you see it, you stop it, you change it. And that's the six words, right, Athena? Six words, see it, stop see it, it sit. See it, stop it, change it. Those are the most powerful yes. six words that we can share with our peeps. They yes. work, you guys. The process works. The process works. There are so many processes within the process, but the process as a whole works. It just works. So we're here to help you. We're here to help you grasp on to each of the processes that are within the process and help you move from hobbling or limping or struggling to, hey, I got this. <laughs> and yes. you will get there. And, and, in the, and, and, and I say that with the caveat because in those moments when you're like, I got this, there will be a moment just a couple of steps ahead when you weren't looking that you might trip over. But that's okay. Even if you fall down, you're going to get back up quicker than you would have a couple weeks ago. So yes. um, just so grateful to be on this journey with you guys. I mean, seriously, being a part of this community, showing up here every week, no matter what, has catapulted my recovery journey. I didn't even know I had a recovery journey. I just thought that I was going to be like in therapy forever about 10 years ago. Honestly, I was like, whoa, I have a lot of stuff to work through. And then you know, I, I sort of thought that I had worked through it all. You know, I was all done with that, you know, okay, time to move on. 
And then when you get hit upside the head with some ninja triggers and you start dissociating or you have new memories or all of a sudden, um, you know, you're uh, um, not functioning or you're having hallucinations or you're just struggling overall or your eating disorder has come back and you're having very unhealthy coping strategies and you're like, oh, all my progress is deleted. Ah, guess what? That's a lie. Your progress, not deleted not deleted. It's back there. You just got to access it. That's why we ha we're using muscle memory. We're going to remember that progress. We're going to remind you of that when you're around other people, we get to remind you of your progress. So um, this is a messy, 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 messy progress. Like Bobby and I always share with you, it's kind of like a big pile of baklava and spaghetti and you're trying to pull apart something that might actually be edible and not taste like the other, but it's, it's tough. It all is mushed together and it's not a linear process. It's not wave a wand, one and done. It, none of this is. It, but we're in it together and we're stronger together. And other people reflect back to us the goodness that we miss, that we are blind to. So we could go on and on and on and repeat all of this stuff over and over and over. But um, Bobby, is there anything on the Twitter stream or any questions that we should address right now? Um, no, I can't. But Rar, it's Laura, posted the cutest picture of Edna. So, oh, I'm yeah. gonna go look for it right now. We love Edna. Edna, Edna comes pretty close to being our mascot. Yeah, but I do love copper and silver as well. <laughs> um, Jack says, trust in your path. Yes, <laughs> I know that some of my clients always say, I know, I know, trust the process. I know, Athena, trust the process. So it's hard to trust the process, you guys. If you don't have a counselor or a therapist or a coach that's willing to give you a map, that's willing to give you what your steps should look like, ask and continue asking. Uh, um, they should be able to share with you. The process is different for everyone. There's no cookie cutter, but your process and your path could look something like this. And they should be able to share that with you. This is what it might look like. My counselor, my, one of my very first, not my first counselor, my first counselor was Kelly. My second counselor was Karen. And she ripped the, the map off of her wall and gave it to me because she knew I needed that. I needed to see where I was going. I needed to see that recovery was possible. I just sat there weeping in tears in her office. Am I ever, ever, ever going to feel normal ever again? And her heart just broke for me. She just ripped it off the wall and said, yes, this is, this is the process. And th this, this gives you every step of the way. It was a critical path method to emotional healing. And I'm telling you, you guys, it was life changing. And it really helped me. And once I met Bobby and sort of like we put our two heads together and all of our recovery journey together, and we, found, we founded this model of our trauma recovery model, moving through the, the different, they look like planets. They, they're like planets in a sky, because I know Jack always says we're all rock stars in, in the same rock star sky. So the theme is sort of a sky, like a nighttime sky with stars. And these are planets that are floating in there. And the, you move from, from planet to planet to planet, but if you get a new trauma, it will take you back to the anchor trauma. Anyone that's watching right now, if you could maybe um, pop up that visual from CSAQT today of the Moberg Parish Trauma recovery model um, so that we can sort of reference it perhaps. It's not referenced in the one page, but maybe I will put that over on our one page downloadables um, page for people to access actually. So um, I'm not sure yet, you guys. We were gonna try to use that um, um, to share in a presentation with everyone. So, and, um, and again, as Bobby mentioned, we're looking at doing an event in November. Um, there was a conference, Bobby, that you and I were discussing um, Bobby, um, uh -huh. the, the conference that we were looking to present at, um, um, that we were just going to present at that was there in Dallas, in addition to the conference that, we're, that we want to host um, ourselves over at that conference center. Um, yes. Are, are we still considering yes. both, or are we going to do like a one, like a either or, or are we thinking doing both? Uh, I missed the deadline to submit for the... Okay. Um, well, no worries. It's, it's annual. It's annual. So, but... But when, as Bobby and I start to sort of get out there more and more and we're presenting at more conferences and, and I, I mean, I traveled a lot last year 
just speaking at different churches and organizations. And um, as Bobby's son gets a little bit older, she'll be traveling more and doing more presenting as well. But um, we just want you guys to know that we're, we're just all in. We need you to know that. We need you to, we need you to know that we're just all in. And we're, we're all in because not only do we believe in you, but we believe in ourselves. We, we believe in ourselves. We believe in our ability to help you get from where you're at to where you want to be. And I don't know that I've ever been able to be in the place that I'm at in my life right now where I can honestly look you all in the face and say, I believe in myself. I believe in you. I believe in this process, and I believe I can help you get from where you are to where you want to be. And I, I don't know if I've ever been as solid as I am right now where I'm at in my journey, and it's only because I've stayed the course and I've not diverted from the left to the left or to the right. So I just want to encourage you that although we don't point it out clearly in the one page downloadable commitment and not giving up is a huge 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 part of healing it is nearly next to impossible to heal if you are going to give up uh, midway through you can pause you can press the pause button it's just going to take a little longer but just know that it's possible regardless of yep. how long it takes right bobby yes and Stephanie asked questions. She said, do you need a, have to have a therapist to heal? Is yeah. self-therapy enough? And um, you have to have one I, other person, a safe person. That's my that's my take. What's your take, Bobby? I don't think you have to have a therapist. Um, I think that you can have. Um, I think we all need to have someone that we can tell our story to the entirety of our story. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a therapist. It can be a, a good friend. It can be a mentor. It can be a clergy person. It can be a lay person. It can be your sponsor in a 12 step program. It can be um, a counselor, like at a church, like you said, a clergy person. It can be a right. coach. Um, it, it, it depends on what it is you're looking for. But the, the, the bottom line of your question, Stephanie, is, is, is self therapy enough? And I think Bobby and I are, are echoing one another in saying that if your self-therapy includes another safe person or safe community that helps you to establish and maintain and practice healthy boundaries, then the answer is yes. If self-therapy is you, like Lone Ranger doing it all on your own, like with no help, that's going to take a long time. And... It's a lonely, lonely road, and I don't recommend doing it all on your own. You, you need to have someone to, oh. yeah, you need to have someone to um, share your journey with. And you need to have someone to reflect back to you the goodness that is in you when toxic shame slaps you upside the head on any given Wednesday, because it can happen. And I think that if you have that one person you can share your story with and then you're involved in community with other survivors, that yeah. can meet that need. Yeah. Um, but if, if you know, Athena and I are just huge supporters of each of you knowing what your recovery journey looks like and needs. So if therapy is not something that you think is what you need, then we support that. But we also support you having support. Um, it is hard. It, it is a hard road to whack through the jungle with your machete on your own. But um, when you have someone, that one person that you've told your story to, and you're in community with other survivors, that's important. And you know, it's interesting because, and Kalisha, thank you for retweeting the, um, the trauma response model. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight as we talk about moving from survivor to thriver is how important it is to have support because support gives us so many things. It gives us perspective, like Athena just talked about, in terms of when I've lost 
perspective on whether or not I'm making recovery. If I've lost perspective on the fact that I am doing a good job, you have other people that say, oh, heck yes, you're doing a good job. I noticed A, I noticed B, I noticed C, you're doing good things. Um, so we're, we'll talk about that some more when we go to the one page tonight. It is on the one page in terms of talking about how important it is that you have support as you move from that process of survivor to thriver. Um, people were asking on the Twitter streams if it's like there's a, a point where you go from survivor to thriver. You know, is there like this fine line? No, it's a gradual process. And also, I think it was Phoenix you were talking about, can you be in a thriver in small ways? Absolutely you can it's not a linear path you can cycle back and forth between survivor and thriver you can cycle back and forth between survivor and thriver in just particular issues um but it is it's a gradual process um there's no you're in or out or in or out or in or out um it's it is very much a process not a destination yeah, I have a I have a question on the Twitter stream. Um, I and you might have mentioned it at the beginning when you started talking, but I don't think you. I think you mentioned um, Kalisha, and then you mentioned. Um, um, oh no, my brain just left. Sorry, but Phoenix asked a question. Did you mention Phoenix's question? I I I don't yes. think you did. You did. Phoenix. She said. Phoenix I hear, was talking. I hear people yes. say they aren't thriving because you haven't arrived. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and we were saying this morning, Bobby, I know you, you did. Okay. So you did answer that. Um, I was trying to multitask, listen to you and tweet. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> one of the last, <laughs> yes, we are goofy and we are glad you are here to view it. Um, sorry. We, this morning, the last tweet I sent out, I think was please, please, please remember we never arrived. Bobby and I are never going to show up here and say, well, we arrive, you all are broken, and we're just good. Like, that's never going to be it, you guys. We never arrive. That doesn't happen. This is a journey. Like Bobby just said, it's not a destination. Um, real, real quick, before we jump into our one page, Bobby, can I share a real quick, like, Hawaii, sure. Maui sort of thing? So as you sure. guys know, as, <laughs> thank you. So as you guys know, Bobby is in um, Dallas, Texas. She is my business partner. We um, uh, we run all of the different facets of this survivor group and everything that it's become with Twitter chats and events and books and um, coaching certification programs for other people that want to do what we're doing. We run it all together. She's in Dallas, Texas. I'm in Maui, Hawaii. Um, Part of living in Maui, Hawaii means not only does it cost a lot of money for me to fly other places to speak and I have to absorb those costs or make sure that my events pay for my expenses, but part of living here in Hawaii is that I meet a lot of tourists. I meet a lot of visitors. 97% of our income on this island is tourism generated. So one of the main tourist attractions here on this island is the road to Hana. Notice I didn't tell you, this is my analogy for the night, Bobby loves analogies, so take note for any analogy lovers, okay? <laughs> this is just for you if you're an analogy lover. Notice I did not say that one of the main tourist attractions on the island of Maui is Hana, the town of Hana. That is not the main tourist attraction. The main tourist attraction on this island other than biking down the volcano, which is a totally different one, different metaphor. The road to Hana. There are t-shirts that say, I survived the road to Hana. The road to Hana, there are 56 bridges, 160 waterfalls. It is beautiful, if you allow it to be. I often, as I worked, most of you know this, I worked as a, a concierge on the club level lounge of the Ritz-Carlton. And I had two types of guests that would ask me about going to Hana and taking the road to Hana. And I'm going to break survivors 
into two groups right now. This is my metaphor for you survivors tonight. Are you ready? One of my guests, we have two guests standing there. They both want to go and they want to take the road to Hana. One of the guests standing at my desk says, do you have a map on how to, how to take the road to Hana? We're really excited to take the road to Hana tomorrow. Wondering if you had a map. My pleasure. Would you like me to highlight the map for you and mark some places of interest and some good places to stop to eat along the way? Uh, I'd be happy to do that for you. Oh, absolutely. That would be wonderful. What are your favorite places to eat at? And so I will highlight the map. And it's quite a skill when you have the map facing them and it's upside down, but you still know how to highlight it. It's pretty awesome. It happens over time. Concierge out there know what I'm talking about. So the second type of guest, this is going to piss off some East Coast people, but this is what most of my East Coast people do. People that live on the in the northeast of the United States, Matt, are you ready? People from New York or New Jersey that come to Maui walk up to my desk and they say, Hey, so how long does it take to get to Hana? How long is it going to take me to get to Hana? And my response is, Perhaps you would like to do a different excursion because if all you want to know is how long it's going to take you to get to a town that has about 300 people in it and there's nothing to see, you're not really going to enjoy it if you're trying to get there as quickly as you can. We got dinner reservations at Merriman's at 7 p.m. How long is it going to take you? Can we get back in time? I mean, this, this is real. This is You can't make this stuff up. So if you are on your recovery journey and you want a map, you're in the right place. We're here. We have maps for you. If you want to know how long it's going to take you to recover, you are either A, asking the wrong question, B, in the wrong place, or both. Because recovery doesn't happen overnight, and you're not going to be back in time for your 7 p.m. dinner reservations, all fixed and band-aided up and perfect. It's just not going to happen, period. It doesn't happen that way. If it happened that way, Bobby and I wouldn't even have jobs right now. Between us, we have 30 years of recovery. 30. 30 years of recovery between us. It doesn't happen overnight. And we might never arrive. And that's okay. Once you become okay with the fact that you're never going to arrive and you're just going to enjoy the journey and help some people along the way, something shifts in your mind. Something magical happens in your mind when you shift from when am I going to get there to I think I'm okay with the process and I'm going to help some people along the way. This hurts. This sucks. Sometimes I want to die. Sometimes I don't want to get out of bed, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to help some people along the way. So that's my analogy for the night. I'm going to step down off my soapbox and um, Bobby, I'm going to give it over to you. What do you have to say about my, my metaphor? I love you. I love your metaphor. <laughs> I love your metaphor. It's perfect. And it, to me, that highlights, but see, that's not all of us are, we all may be going to Hana, but we might all be going on a different road. It's important for everyone to recognize that my recovery journey might not look like Joe's. It might not look like, you know, Sally's. Each of us are going to have a different process. And that doesn't, just because theirs doesn't look like mine, doesn't mean either one of us is doing it wrong. It just means that we have different needs and we have different innate skills and strengths. So there's no way to do it wrong unless you're headed in the opposite direction, okay? You gotta at least be headed toward Hana. Um, but you can take the road, you can bike up, you can, you know, parachute down from a plane. It doesn't matter. As long as you are on a healthy path, then it's your path and we respect it. Um, we can give you some guideposts. We can give you some guidelines. Um, but if it would take us a whole lot of knowing you and your particular story and your strengths and your assets to um, be able to help you write a roadmap. We're certainly not going to sit down and say this is the way for everyone because it doesn't work that way. Um, but it is a process. 
And, but then I think that's the way it is for anybody in life. I really do. I don't think that anybody in this life can say there's a point where they made it. If you think you've made it, you've arrived, then that means you don't think you have any more learning to do. You don't have any more things to process. And I can't imagine a life like that. So I don't think anybody's life, not just for survivors, I don't think anybody's life path has a destination. It might have goal markers, you know, okay, so, um, you know, one of the things I really want in my life is to um, not have my eating disorder anymore. So when I reach that place, okay, good, I've reached this milestone now. Now I'm going to work on something else. Now I'm going to work on something else. Uh, I don't think for anybody on this planet, there is a spot called arrived. So I don't think it's unique just to us. But um, yeah, we can give you some guideposts and that's what these videos are all about. They're giving you guides and tips and strategies so that your journey is as smooth and as quick as it can possibly be. So um, Ms. Athena, are you ready for me to put up the one page? I think so. Um, my New York accent, I don't know if, it, if, if, if I won any fans with that New York accent, although we did gain a whole bunch of viewers. Wow, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> How did I do, guys? <laughs> it's totally inconsequential. I just wanted to share the story from when I worked at the Ritz-Carlton because I would get a lot of East Coast people, um, and that was how they sounded to me. So. If I offended anyone, it was not my intention. It was my attempt, a uh, very poor attempt, perhaps, at humor. So, um, yeah, um, people want maps is what I'm reading. Everybody wants the map. South Jersey Girl wants a map. Uh, Bird Rogue wants a map. Everybody wants a map. Light bulb. Phoenix had a light bulb. Allie um, says, this is deep, great analogy. I now understand. Um, we we got to... Oh, and, and it's crochet time says sometimes it feels like she's going the opposite way. I mean, you're not the only one. I get turned around on my road, too. We all get turned around sometimes, especially when we're in unfamiliar territory. We get a little bit farther along in our recovery, farther than we've ever been. And that's somewhere we've never been before. So we get a little lost and we take a detour and we're like, whoa, 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 where, where am I? And we thought this is like, I'm warning you that this could be a light bulb. When we get just so far on our recovery journey to a place we've never been because we're healing and we're getting to a place of healing and we go, we look around and we go, oh my gosh, I've never been here before. Where am I? I'm lost. I better go back. I, I better go back to where I know where I am. And sometimes we fall back into a, an old pattern, an old eating pattern, an old thinking pattern, an old relationship pattern, an old coping pattern because it's familiar and it's comfortable and it's not always the best place for us because journeying out into the deep waters is where we're going to be be swimming free in our recovery and, and we're going to finally be free finally free say it with me finally free we can get there we can we can so oh bobby what you're laughing <laughs> no i was, I was, I was remembering <laughs> yes i was remembering about um I can't even remember why I had this analogy at one point in my life, but I was talking about how, um, you know, somehow I thought my path, I likened my path to like canoeing down a, a, a river. And I told someone, I just get so impatient sometimes because I'm not going right fast enough. So I um, paddle over to the side of the river and pick that canoe up and put it on my head, you know, like they do in the movies, turn it around upside down. And I carry that sucker through the woods because I am bound and determined to find a road that is faster than that river. Um, so nine carrying, times out of ten, carrying, it's the stupidest yeah. thing. <laughs> I am. Here I am trekking through the woods, carrying this canoe on my head going, there's got to be a faster way. But there's not. And eventually I have to turn around and put the canoe back in the water and get back in it and just learn to be patient. 
Um, but I have been known. I have been known to pick that canoe up out of the water. Or, you know, when you put a jigsaw puzzle together, if that piece doesn't fit, I'll rip that tab off and slap it in there. <laughs> I've done the same thing. I'm like, this has to fit right yes. here. Yes, it works. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Eventually it bites me in the hiney. Yeah. You guys, there, but, this is not a linear process. All of these analogies we're giving you, I mean, when we journey out into unfamiliar territory that feels scary because it's not familiar, sometimes we panic and go back to where we were, and then we shame ourselves for doing that. But we just want you to know that that could happen. You could get out into farther territory than you've never been, and ask a safe person, am I how am I doing? Am I farther along than I was? It feels really scary. What do you think? And they might tell you, yeah, you know what? I noticed some things about you. Or I noticed that you handled this differently. I noticed that you normally would have blew up at me over, over this thing. And you didn't. You were really patient. So, yeah, I think you're making some progress. I mean, it's important to have those safe people that you're plugged into. And, um, uh, oh, I received, um, Bobby, I wanted to mention this really quick as you're preparing the uh, the one page. Um, sure. what, what time is it? Yeah. So, okay. Um, I posted on Facebook um, inviting everybody to come. And, you know, our community, you guys all know because you, you're you here all the time. There's 30-something of you here, and you all are, like, always here. So, okay. Our community has grown so fast that we don't have time sometimes to individually message and like respond to everything or whatever and we have to maintain like healthy boundaries and we have to have a schedule and like we're just two girls right so there was a comment on Facebook um, this gal said that she was um, really upset because she tried to reach out and she just couldn't get plugged in so um, if that is you and you are still struggling and you don't know how to get plugged into community please go over to our YouTube channel and look at the about section and follow the four step process. And if the four step process hasn't worked for you, try it again because hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people are plugged into safe community by using the four step process. I promise you the process works, trust the process. So please don't give up and say goodbye. Um, please, please, you know, if you want to try to get plugged in, get plugged in. And if you don't, that's fine too. Just watch the videos or do whatever floats your boat and whatever helps you. But we want to let you guys know we care. We're just doing all we can. We're two girls. We're just two girls doing the best we can. So we're bringing other people alongside of us. Bobby, your comments on that, and, and then let's do the one page. No, you just said if that floats your boat, and I was just thinking about my canoe again. Exactly. <laughs> Pun intended. Did you see how I tied that in? <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did That's right. There. You're funny. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at that one page. Again, if you would like to access the one page, you can go to nomoreshameproject.com, click on the tab that says downloadables, and you will find them all right there. The most recent one is at the top. So um, it should say moving from survivor to thriver. Click on that, and you'll be able to read the PDF, then download it. Uh, feel free to download any ones that you want to. By now, um, you probably have enough to have a small book. <laughs> and um, we invite you to download them all and access them whenever you need to. So we are looking now at the Moving from Survivor to Thriver one page. Um, now, there is a common model used in the survivor and survivor helping professional communities, which uses three stages to describe the recovery process. Yes, it's a very simplified model. Yes, there are more complex ones. Athena and I even have one that's more complex. But this is a very simple one that I think most of us can relate to. So the first stage is victim. This is when we're being actively abused in any way. Okay, so when I was a child and I was being victimized by my father, I was a victim. Okay, I hadn't yet, I didn't have the abuse in my rearview mirror yet. So, but when I did, when I finally left home and was out on my own, I moved into the stage of being a survivor. So the transition from victim to survivor is just 
where you are in relationship to where your abuse happened. It's not something that you have to really move to. It's just, are you currently being abused or are you not? Now, I know that some people, some of you in our community, bless your hearts, are still living with your abuser. Um, but you're also working on your recovery. So you might be cycling through both of them on a repeated basis. Uh, but I want to recognize that we do have some people in our community like that. Okay, the second stage is survivor. When someone is no longer being abused and is in recovery from their abuse. And then in parentheses, we put sometimes the survivor is re-victimized in adulthood while in recovery. You know, hello, um, I have multiple times. I know Athena has as well. So, but we would still be classified as survivors of our childhood abuse. Hey, Bobby. Uh-huh. I just wanted to mention on the first one, on uh -huh. the, fir the first stage victim, right. for those of our members of our community or people who are viewing our videos that might still be living with their abusers that you mentioned. Yes. yes. Um, I just wanted to mention to you guys that are still living in the same house with your abusers or you're still in contact with your abusers um, for whatever reason, there's no shame in that. If, if you are an adult, and you're not a child anymore and you're still living in abuse there please don't be ashamed and think we're shaming you we are here to guide you to hopefully help make make healthier choices we want we want to equip you with the tools you need to make healthier choices our videos will still help you and we will still encourage you but there's no shame in it at all um, it is just not safe it's not a safe situation to still live in your with your abuser but there's no shame in it. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know I what I mean, Jelly Bean. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard you say that before. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the third stage. The third stage is referred to as being a thriver when the period of recovery is nearing its end. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's ended. You're getting closer to the end. You're not in the throes of recovery anymore. And your life no longer revolves around abuse and recovery. You no longer define yourself by your abuse, but you've reclaimed your power, your self-worth and your independence. And you define yourself by your own choices rather than by your abuser's choices to victimize you. So it's interesting because Simi just asked on the Twitter stream, how do you know when you've, you know, moved into, let's see, how do you, how do you know when you are in thriving mode? And that, to me, the most central answer to that is when recovery and your abuse is no longer a huge chunk of your life. Now, that doesn't mean that you haven't moved into, if some of us, many of us, move into advocacy in one way or another. Yeah. Okay, so yes, um, I have done the bulk of my recovery work. Not all of it, but I have done the bulk of it. But survival, surviving, the world of the being a survivor is still very much the center of my life because that is my profession because I am an advocate. Um, other people do the bulk of their recovery work. Surviving is no longer the central theme of their life and they move on into something else. You know, they don't, they don't attend the support groups anymore. They don't come to the Twitter chats. Um, they don't watch the videos because now they have established a post-trauma identity and self-worth, independence, and they're off in another direction. Bobby? Uh-huh. I, um, I love how you just described that. I love how you described how you'll know you're a thriver. I, I, um, I answered, I didn't hit reply for some reason. I don't know why I hit new tweet, but I put, we know we are thriving when we feel empowered and we are able to make healthier choices. That's the way that I knew that I was thriving. 
Um, yes, I see it. Yes, when we feel empowered and we're able to make healthier choices. And we have a question on the Twitter on the Twitter feed um, from Amy Hunt. She wants to know the number one source from which we pull our healing. Um, I'm not sure the direction that the question is being asked, like source, like from a higher power or from like a book or from um, like like um, scholarly articles or if there's like a resource or like a YouTube channel, I'm not sure. Amy, if you could um, clarify the question of the number one source from which we pull healing. Um, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Bobby, do you, have, do you have an answer for that or would you like her to clarify? Yeah, Amy, if you could give us a little more info. Yeah. And then we will help. Yeah. So, good night, Sarah. Sarah's going good night. Yes, good night, Sarah. Finally sleepy. Yay. Um, okay. So those are the three stages. Victim, survivor, thriver. And as is recovery, the progress through these stages is not linear. Um, it's so, it's cyclical. Um, a survivor may cycle back and forth between stages at any point, depending upon their life circumstances. And that's a normal part of a recovery. It does not mean that you're losing ground. It doesn't mean that you're moving backwards. It's just a part of the process. Um, so it's, and I, I want to make the point that we have to remember to go back and look at what happened to us. Okay. Our grooming was not linear. It was cyclical. And many of us went through a very typical cycle of abuse. Okay. For, you know, our abuser would abuse us and then they may have been, um, apologetic or they may have left us alone for a while and then they begin to lose control and lose control over their impulses and they abuse us and it went through a cyclical process or our grooming was cyclical in nature you know um we would be groomed to um never say no to our abuser and as we tried to set boundaries or as especially as we got older maybe a teenager we went back through the cycle of being groomed out of having any independence, out of wanting something different. So grooming, our grooming and our abuse were very cyclical in nature as well. And so our recovery is going to be very cyclical. It's so layered. It's so complex. The twists and turns and roads that were built in our mind by what happened when we were children. It is unfortunately not linear and not simple just to unravel. Um, so remember that when you're feeling like you have lost ground or when you're feeling like you are not making any progress, remember what Athena and I say, recovery is not linear. You are not losing ground. You are just tackling the same issue on a deeper or other level. That's it. It's not a bad thing. Not at all. And this morning in chat, someone asked the question, um, if I feel I have moved into the thriving stage, but I'm still getting new memories, does that mean that I have to go back to the survivor stage? And I would say absolutely not. We don't really have that much control over our memories coming back to us. But if you have put the work in place to move into thriving, if your self-worth is in place, if you're empowered, if um, recovery is no longer the central theme of your life, when you have a new memory, you'll be so resilient. It will not kick you all the way back into the survivor stage. And if it does, it will not be for very long. So recovering new memories is not at all an indication of what stage you're in. It's just an indication of the fact that your brain feels like um, it's safe to drop, you know, one, two, three, four more memories to you. 
Um, how are you doing on the Twitter stream, Athena? <laughs> We're doing really good. I told Tracy Jinx because her question the moment you were talking was can you reach can you reach thriver but end up back at survivor if new memories come <laughs> <laughs> i said jinx yes um yes absolutely you can you can end up back at survivor but like bobby was just saying you are resilient at that point and you know new we like bobby just said i just want to echo everything she just said you know, we learn all the time that it's good for us to repeat, especially if we're doing videos, so you guys can hear this. It is good. It is good for for um, you guys to know that you cannot control when new memories come. You cannot control that. You cannot. You you can be aware of your triggers. You can you can gather coping strategies and grounding skills. But if a new memory is going to come, a new memory is going to come. It's on a different schedule. It's not on our schedule. It doesn't live to our timetable. New memories come whenever the heck they feel like it. Now, certain things can trigger new memories. Um, the sense of smell, as you guys know, we've talked about previously, is precognitive. When you smell something, you smell something before your brain even knows what's going on. The sense of smell can be the most trigger, most triggering sense of all for survivors. Before you even see something coming, oftentimes ninja triggers can be triggered from a scent. So yes. but you just you you cannot, Bobby, I know I just wanted to echo everything you just said. You cannot choose when new memories come. I had a new memory a few weeks back, you guys, that hit me so hard. It hit me so hard that I doubted it. I doubted it. And I was like, could this be real? Why wouldn't I have remembered it sooner if it was real? And I and I put myself down that road, which by the way, guys, is a dead end road. You end up going back the other way. If you're remembering something and it's a memory and it's giving you that sickness in your stomach, that dry mouth, your palms are sweaty, you're triggered, you're you're spinny, you're feeling like you can't ground, you can't cope, you're 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 not feeling very well, you're not able to multitask, your executive functioning is 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 affected. It, there's a chance that's a new memory and that you, why would you make it up? Why would you make up a new memory? I have to r remind myself of these things. We don't make up memories just for funsies. It's not fun to make up new memories of our abuse. Hello? No, we don't. It's not fun. But new memories come when new memories come. And we simply learn more tools and strategies um, and more coping techniques that are healthy and we become more resilient through muscle memory as we bounce back. The more we bounce back, the quicker we bounce back, like Bobby always teaches. You guys, we're hoping these, these, um, these little quips and these reminders that we're giving you are helping um, and not causing you to be ashamed or, or feel frustrated. So let us know on the Twitter, on the Twitter stream or in the comments below. Allie says, so when we relapse or have days where the abuse seems so real, are you saying all that is part of recovery? And I'm saying that, yes, it can all be part of recovery. Um, and I wouldn't even use the word relapse. Yeah. You know, um, when I think of the word relapse, I think more about um, addiction. But I, it has a negative connotation. That's what it is. And I don't want it to have a negative connotation for you, Allie. You feel like you've lost a couple of steps and you're cycling back through, you know, new memories. Um, that's work. You're still, you're still working. You're still at it. You're still making progress. So, yes, I'm, it is. It's part of the process. And you are doing nothing, no thing wrong when that happens. Okay, I really, oh, I want, I want you to hear that, Allie. You are doing nothing wrong. It is part of the process. And um, who was it that said they were flexing their resiliency muscle? Woohoo! Oh yes, Phoenix. <laughs> I Exercise love it. Exercise her resiliency muscle. Um. Okay. 
All right, so um, let's look at some tools that we can use to facilitate moving from survivor to thriver. Okay, the first is self-worth. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how much it is absolutely critical that you build up your self-worth. When you do, it will, it just inoculates you. And I'm going to use that analogy because I think it's, I think it's perfect. Self-worth inoculates you against so many stressors and negative influences in life. If you have a, an appropriate self-worth, a high self-worth, and high is right. High self-worth is not arrogance. You are very, very, very worthy. You came into this world worthy. You're still worthy now regardless of what your abusers did to you. You are worthy. And so when you fully own that, and I mean own that in every cell of your being, own it through your body straight down into the earth, grounded, own it, rooted like a tree, own it, um, you will move from survivor to thriver. And I think if there's anything I could do for every survivor in the world, it would be help them increase their self-worth. If I had one thing, <laughs> if there was just one thing I could teach every survivor in the world, it would be self-worth. Hey, because, Bobby. Well, uh -huh. um, self-worth, you were gonna say, I'm sorry, because I just wanna let you know there's a question. Okay, oh, when you have self-worth, then you don't let people treat you badly, you have good boundaries, um, you don't feel like you're making every other mistake, it is just, it's just magical. Yeah. And it's not linear either, guys. Some days I'm feeling <laughs> some days I'm feeling super duper worthy of being treated with respect and kindness. And then out of nowhere, something will break across the room in the kitchen when I'm in my office and I will yell, sorry, as though it were my fault. So guys, <laughs> Cue the canned laughter. Yes, I do that. I apologize for things that are not my fault, even when it happens in another room, even if I'm feeling particularly strong that day. So, and, and then I go, I can't believe I just apologized all the way from my office when something broke in the kitchen. So, you know, it's just, it's a process. It's not linear. And, and we hope that this is all helping you. Bobby, the question I wanted to share with you when you were talking about self-worth, uh -huh. um, I was just actually, um, typing to Mary, letting her know that the bulk of her new memories um, come in nightmares during her sleep. And I said, I said, please do not discount your memories that come through this avenue. Um, and then Stephanie, right on cue, immediately said, what about dreams about your abuse? And we don't remember. Is that reliable info? My response might differ from Bobby's, but I'm going to say a big fat hell yeah. Hell yeah, it is reliable info. If, if, if you are feeling a dry mouth, upset stomach, and you have a deep, deep, deep knowing that all of a sudden you finally remember the piece that you didn't remember all along, and it came to you in a dream and you start remembering like the different smells and the different place and the, oh yeah, we were there and we went to this place and we were in this car and, and it was, I remember that cousin, I remember that aunt and then I remember this person passed away. It's different than if you have just a horrific nightmare about something random, but memories can come through dreams. Bobby, your comments on that and your answer um, to Stephanie? Yeah, um, and I just, I just typed it out and tweeted it that I'm not 100% sure that I can say um, all the dreams and nightmares that you have about abuse are actual memories, but I lean in that direction and I lean pretty heavily. In fact, I might fall over any second now. Um, especially if afterward in the morning when you wake up, you've still got it clearly in your mind and more pieces fall into place. It's like, oh, now I remember this. Now I remember that. Or, you know, like Athena said, now I can, you know, I, can, I see that memory in my head and I can smell the smell in that room. I remember what was going on when we were in that place. I remember going to that aunt's house. Um, but I cannot say with 100% surety that every time we dream or have a nightmare, because dreaming of your abuse would be very nightmarish that it means 
um, it's a hundred percent true. But like yeah, I, 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 I lean think, there. I think it depends. Yeah, I think. Are we saying the same thing? Yes, I believe we are. Um, Sue wants to know if it's too late. Nope, not too late, Sue. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. And Allie says her relapse is her negative coping skills like self-harming. Shame, shame, sad face. Allie, I want to speak directly to you and say while your self-harm is a negative coping strategy, I want to let you know that shame never... Um, produces anything good. If you haven't watched Bobby's video, her short few minute video on the difference between guilt and shame, please do because shame never produces anything good. Um, the pressure that you put on yourself through shame will not produce a diamond out of coal. It just won't. The more pressure you put on yourself, the more you shame yourself, it will only send you farther down a spiral where you don't want to go. Now, if you are acknowledging, I have a unhealthy coping strategy, and that is self-harm. The way I self-harm is I binge eat. The way I self-harm is I cut. The way I self-harm is I, um, I choose to uh, bin, or I choose to uh, purge my food, either through vomiting or laxatives. Those are unhealthy coping strategies. Rather than shaming yourself, Ali, I would love for you to say, I know that I, fe I might feel ashamed right now, but I also know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I can learn healthier coping strategies. It will take some time, but I know I can learn healthier coping strategies so that I don't fall back into my, into my self-harming behavior. Bobby, your comments on that? I think just recognizing it, again, is a huge victory. You know, and we have a tendency not to celebrate our small wins, sometimes not even to celebrate our huge wins. You know what? Celebrate the win that you recognize it. Okay, I see it now. Now that I see it, there's something I can do about it. Um, but, yeah, like Athena said, there's no good thing ever comes from shame. I realized that we learned how to shame from our abusers in our childhood, um, but it's never, it's never something that helps us get further down the path. So try not to shame yourself, Allie. Try and break that particular part of the cycle. There's a wonderful quote out there um, by Mary Rodmacher Hershey, I believe, is, is who it is. It says sometimes, it says courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's a small, quiet voice at the end of the day that says, I will try again tomorrow. Okay? Sometimes having courage and changing doesn't work in a huge, bright flash of light. Sometimes we just get to the end of the day and say, okay. I'm going to try again tomorrow. And that is huge. So, um, ooh, ooh, there's a, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's a great, great question. Bird Rogue, I had a picture trigger me. I remember all of the feelings then, but not the story behind it. Is that a new memory? My response, Bird Rogue, is that is an emotional flashback. That is an emotional flashback. An emotional flashback can lead you to remember new memories, but it's not necessarily a new memory. It is an emotional flashback. When you look at something and you're looking at it and it triggers you and you feel all the same feelings as you would if you were incredibly triggered, but you can't put your finger on what it is, like... I think Richard Grannon does, uh, he, he says like, let's say you were abused on your bicycle when you were little and now you could be sitting in a sidewalk cafe and see a bicycle go by and all of a sudden you're fully flashing back and you're sick and you, you feel completely triggered and you're just, you're unraveling at the seams. That's an emotional flashback. A bicycle going by in the street, no matter where you're at, is going, it, that's an emotional flashback. You're flashing back to the abuse. The bicycle going by was a trigger. So right. the, the picture, was a trigger, 
and what you were feeling w was, it, it could have been a new memory, but I, I don't know, I wasn't there, but it was an emotional flashback that could lead you to a new memory. Yes, yes. I can remember as an example in grad school, I had a professor do something exactly as my abuser would have. And I mean every single element exactly as, and I lost it, <laughs> which I, that's not me. I don't, I don't do that. I made a public scene. I was so upset with him and it took me a while. Once I got myself together to realize that that was an emotional flashback. What he did threw me into the emotions that I had when I was being abused. And my reaction was the reaction that I, I maybe wish I could have had then, but of course I didn't because it wasn't safe. But yeah, um, emotional flashbacks happen and we need to be aware of them. So when they happen, we don't feel like we're kind of losing our minds, you know? Um, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the one page. Um, so self-worth, first thing to work on. Second thing, boundaries, okay? Boundaries are so important because they do two things. They protect our recovery. We, all of us have worked very hard on our recovery. If you're here tonight live, or you're listening to this podcast, or you're watching this video on YouTube, you are actively working on your recovery and by golly, you want to protect that. And so you have to set boundaries. You have to set boundaries around yourself. You have to set boundaries against toxic people. You have to let in the good, keep out the bad. Um, but we also want to protect ourselves against getting victimized again, which unfortunately happens very often to survivors because of our grooming. So it is impossible to heal and recover fully without healthy boundaries. Boundaries are so important. And Ooh, Kalisha says, I try to think of recovery as a winding road. You took a left, but the overall direction is north. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent, Kalisha. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Keep going, keep going. Boundaries, no, boundaries, okay. boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> Way to go, Kalisha. Um, hope. You know, this is one that is very hard to find sometimes in recovery um, when the clients that I work with are at their lowest points, they just can't find hope. They just lose track of hope. So you have to find some piece of hope for yourself and hang on to it and don't lose it because your recovery journey will be harder if you lose your sense of hope that things are gonna get better. It doesn't mean it'll be impossible, but it will be harder if you can't hang on to that hope. Power, you know, I see that and I have this automatic gut negative reaction because um, power was always something that was negatively used against me as a child, but now as an adult, I have to remember, I am not still a child. I did not have any power back then. I couldn't stop my abuser from doing what he was doing to me. But now as an adult, I have huge power and I can make the changes I want to make. I can build a thriving life for myself. And so often as survivors, we forget that we do have power and we have to not just remember that we have it, but we got to grab it and we have to intentionally use it to move ourselves along the road to recovery. Vision. Now we haven't talked about this one very much um, in our videos or on in our Twitter chats, but I'm a firm believer that you got to kind of have a bit of a vision for where you're headed. Even if it's not, okay, I'm going to have, you know, 7.5 children 
and be married and live in a 2,200 square foot home in a suburb of Chattanooga. I'm going to be working as a, you know, registered nurse. And, no, that's not what I mean. But you have to have a vision for what your life is going to kind of look like. You know, are you going to be free to pursue your creative arts? Um, are you going to be actively seeking um, relationships with other people? And I also think that it's really important that you have an idea of what it's going to feel like when you move into that thriver stage. Are you going to feel more peaceful? Are you going to feel more joyful? What is it when we know what we're moving towards? It is so much easier to have hope and to keep going in that one direction that we need to go. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't get a year down the road and go, oh, well, I thought that where I was headed was towards this, you know, career in photography, but I don't think so now. That's absolutely fine. But you, I, I'm... I am a big believer that you kind of got to know the direction that you're headed. And the more you can visualize it in your mind, the easier it will be to get there. And then just like we talked about earlier, support. You need to have support along the way. Um, you can do it on your own, but it's much lonelier and it's much harder. Traveling our path with others allows us to share resources, receive validation and perspective, and helps protect us from secondary victimization. Now remember that everybody's path is not the same. So you may have people that you meet up with on this leg of the journey, and then you go off on the next leg of your journey, and then you're gonna meet up with another group of people, okay? Um, it may not be the same people all through your journey, and that's okay. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you needed to move on to another stage. So, there we go, Joe. I never heard you say that. <laughs> Jelly Bean. <laughs> um, I was just sending a message to Bird Rogue regarding emotional flashbacks. Um, and I will send it because I am not good at multitasking. Um, you guys, oh, everybody's saying good night. A whole bunch of people are saying good night. Good night, everybody. Oh, we have the greatest community ever. Okay, so we just want you guys to know that this one page is very comprehensive, and while it's just a one page and it looks like, boom, done, again, we want to repeat and encourage you that recovery is not a linear, a linear um, process, and while it is easy for us to put all of this information just in, on, on a one-page downloadable for you so that it's easily accessible. It's not going to happen as quickly as just reading through it and acknowledging it. There will be some areas of your recovery that you can watch some videos, read a book, read a resource, read a one-page, and go, oh my gosh, light bulb. I, I, I get it. I get it. And you grasp it, and then you catapult forward like months farther than you've been sort of stuck in the same section of your recovery or the, or the, an area. But then there will be other times, and we really want to encourage you because this can get discouraging, but there, there will be some times when you will watch video after video after video and read resource after resource after resource and purchase books and courses, and you're just not moving at the pace you want to move. And... We just want to encourage you not to give up. Please don't give up. Freedom is so worth it. I can't wait until I can actually publish the book that I want to publish called Finally Free. Like, and even if I'm not finally free, I have like a glimpse of what it would be like if I were finally free. Like, I can't wait for that. I'm so excited. But as you guys know, Bobby and I are huge proponents of walking your talk. And so in order for she and I to walk our talk, 
we are fully engaged with online community. We're fully engaged in our own recovery journey. We acknowledge our triggers. We acknowledge our unhealthy coping strategies. And we move forward in a direction that is healthier than it has been. And we are choosing to make healthier choices. We are establishing and maintaining healthier boundaries. We do have that vision. We do have that community. We are on this path. We have asked for that map. We've created a map. We're helping other people. Like we see something that we don't like in our recovery or something that's affecting us. We stop and we handle it differently and we change it. We see it, stop it, change it. So all of these systems that we're sharing with you, moving from victim to survivor to thriver, see it, stop it, change it. The trauma recovery model, moving moving through the model of, of um, ending up over here in advocacy and, and reclaiming your life. And for some of us guys, reclaiming, is really not existent because we're claiming our lives for the very first time. We're not even able to reclaim anything because our abuse started when we were infants. And so we're claiming our lives for the very first time. So we just want to encourage you that if you're struggling, if you're stuck, if you're frustrated, if this video has caused you to think of a whole different, uh, think of your recovery in a whole different way and you're you're sensing that you might be shaming yourself or you're feeling exasperated or you're feeling exhausted or you're like, I can't believe this is so depressing. I thought it was just going to be done. I thought I could just get to Hana. There's nothing in Hana. Hana is a tiny town with a few hundred people. It's all about the journey. It's about the road to Hana with all the bridges and all the waterfalls. And it's not great to accept the fact that we're on a journey and it's gonna be ongoing. But the journey has so many beautiful stops along the way. And it's so beautiful when you reach towards the end of your journey and you're actually helping others and you're just less triggered and you just feel solid and, and you don't have as many flashbacks and you don't have as many nightmares. You're sleeping better, you have better coping strategies. You're like, boom, look at me, I'm doing it. And that can happen. It's not ever gonna go away like, boom, gone, done you know, like magical fairy dust. Like I wish we could just sprinkle some magical fairy dust on you and have your recovery journey be done and have you be all better back to normal, whatever normal is, what is normal. But we can say that we're navigating this journey. We're not giving up. We're gonna stick with you and you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. You get to hang out with a whole bunch of other people that are on the same journey. And I, I heard a quote last night that the deepest amount of pain that a human being could feel is if they feel alone and unloved and unwanted and unnecessary. So if that quote is true, I want you to know as we transition into the time of the video when we welcome new people that have never been here before, and if you have been here, then we'll say aloha to you in just a moment, but I want to close with this, okay? You are not alone. You are loved. You are necessary. And you, you, you matter. You matter. You just, you just do. You're not alone. You're loved. You matter. You're significant. And you might not feel that way right now, but your abuse lies to you. Harriet, could you please pop up the thumbnail to the video that talks about the lies your abuse tells you? Um, your abuse lies. So please, please, please stick it through. Uh, just continue on the path. Try, try, try to be patient with yourself. And just, just know that you're not alone. You're not alone. You're loved. You're significant. You matter. And um, we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. So... Um, we'll say aloha to all of you who are here with us every single week for Q&A. And for those of you who are new and would like to know how to get plugged into Safe Community, we are grateful to have you stay with us. Uh, next week, guys, come on back, Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Bobby, what's our topic we're talking about next week again? Ah, next week is strength-based recovery. So using the innate strengths that you have inside you to propel your recovery further. And how does that differ from post-traumatic growth? Oh, somebody asked that this morning, yes. Post-traumatic growth is the growth that you have as a result of your recovery work. Whereas strength-based recovery, um, 
is when you do an inventory of the strengths that you have inside you and you use those to move your recovery forward. Yes. Well, kind of like when you, like everybody has gifts and talents that they were born with. Like Bobby's gifts and talents are different than mine. She is my wordsmith. Like when I can't think of a word, I'm like, Bobby, 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 what's the word? <laughs> and so then she'll tell me like, oh, are you trying to think of this word? And I'm like, yes, that was the word. But then if Bobby wants sometimes, sometimes not always, but sometimes if she wants something to look beautiful and pretty and, and like wants it to be organized and like, like perfect for like our brand and like add, add branding to it and like whatever, then sometimes she'll reach out to me and she'll ask me to help her with that because I loved it or something techy or like, yes. to, like plugins and, and like code and, and widgets and like I get really like nerded out and excited about stuff like that. Anything social media related, I get really excited about like to learn the different platforms and stuff. So the, the, those are gifts and talents that I was born with and she was born with different gifts and talents. And like you guys in our community, I can already think like there are some of you that are the most amazing artists you're, you have artistic ability out the wazoo. Some of you are so technical and amazing. Some of you are, are engineers. Some of you are nurses. Some of you are so compassionate. Some of you have the ability to encourage others without even trying. Just your, your presence is encouraging. Um, some of you have the ability and the talent to ask the perfect question in such a concise way that it just makes sense. Like, you can just, like, work, work words in a way that just like like it's like a poem almost like the way you ask questions or the way that you the way that you speak you know who's really good at this is Vinny Vinny Kosas you guys she's if you're not following her and she has a book called um is it cult cult survivor cult girl I think it's child of a cult something like that cult yeah. child cult, cult child, child. Yeah. yeah she is she has beautiful poetry she's a beautiful writer um she is one of the most talented individuals ever look when it comes to creative writing um but yeah you guys we're gonna we're gonna talk about how to apply all that to our recovery and like what comes naturally to us and what are some areas that we have to put a little bit more effort into and i'm so excited to just do the research on this topic and come back to you next week so um thank you for tuning in um, for this video for um, this week's uh, version or edition of Trauma Recovery University on the topic of moving from survivor to thriver. And I look forward to seeing you back next week on live Q&A Monday, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And Bobby is going to do a screen share on how to get connected in, with us and how to get connected to uh, into a safe community. Yay. Yay. Okay. So there we go. Okay, let me make it bigger. These are the ways that you can connect with Athena and I. Um, we have three Twitter chats a week. Actually, right now at this moment, we have four until the end of April. So if you're watching this on a replay or a podcast, later our final Wednesday night chat for in honor of Sexual Abuse Awareness Month is this coming Wednesday at the 27th? Is that right, Athena? Wednesday's the 27th? I believe so. Let me just pull it up super duper quick. I have it right here. Um, Wednesday is the 27th, um, 2, 2 p.m. Hawaii <laughs> time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yes. 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 Hashtag survivor steps. Yes. So that's the, that'll be the last button. Um, traditionally, we have three a week, and the first one is at 10 o'clock Pacific time, 6 p.m. GMT um, in the UK, and the hashtag for that is CSAQT, which is Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. And then the second one is this one right here that you're listening to watching. It is an interactive um, and live video broadcast with a Twitter chat. And the hashtag is no more shame and it is at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern, 2 a.m. Tuesday morning. And then on Tuesday evening is our third Twitter chat of the week. And the hashtag for that is sex abuse chat. And it's at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern and 2 o'clock Wednesday morning for those of you in the UK. If you would like to join one of our Facebook support groups, 
there. Here is the four step process. So easy, so easy, so easy. Please use this process because when you try to tap into us other ways, it just takes us longer to find you and um, get you connected. Um, so like the Trauma Recovery University page, send Athena and I friend requests. Um, please send friend requests to both of us um, because we're in two different time zones and we have two different schedules. And sometimes it's just easier for one, to a, one of us to get to you before the other. Once you, we have accepted your friend request, then send us a message, something like, I'd like to heal and save community. I'd like to join one of your support groups. And then we will typically, if we don't know you, so if you've not been a part of our Twitter chats, if we don't know you from a live event, if we haven't interacted with you in any way, we're likely to ask you some questions. And please don't be offended. That is just because we're trying to vet people and keep our communities safe. There are predators who like to get into the support groups and take advantage of our survivors. And we are so protective of them. We don't want that to happen. So um, please know that if we ask you questions, it's just because we're trying to make sure that you're a good fit for our support groups. And then once we ask you questions, we will go ahead and welcome you into one of the support groups and post an introduction to you. That's it. That's simple. Four steps. One, two, three, four. Yay. Yay. So let me find the next. I know sometimes people, um, they leave us nasty grams because we're not able to, to, to respond to everything, but you guys, we're, we're thanking you in advance for your patience and for your grace um, because we're doing all we can and we devised a four-step process for you to help you and to help us because it is what is mandatory for us to have sanity because this survivor community started out with just a few girls and like a couple brave guys and now there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe even a thousand or something that we've touched personally, I don't even know, but in 64 countries. So we thank you in advance for your patience and your grace as it pertains to uh, joining safe community and, and responding to correspondence. Thank you. Yes, okay. So let's look at ways to contact us. Oh, I have to get to the right place here. There we go. So ways to contact us. Sorry, my phone is just deep in there. Um, and again, I must make it bigger. Oh, too big. <laughs> okay. So yes, as Athena said, we do our best to reply within 48 hours. It's not always possible. Um, you can reach me at bobbylparish at gmail.com. You can reach Athena at Athena Moberg speaking at gmail.com. And our joint email account is no more shame project at gmail.com. If you'd like to connect with us on Twitter, I am Bobby L. Parrish. Athena is Athena Moberg. And then Trauma Recovery University has a Twitter account, and that is Trauma Recovery U. On Facebook, we have a Trauma Recovery University page. My business page is Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. Um, my personal page is Bobby Parrish. And then um, Athena's pers personal page is Dawn Athena Moberg. And her professional page is Athena Moberg Speaking. You can find all of our videos up on YouTube, Roku TV, and Google Plus. Just do a search for Trauma Recovery University. And every week you can watch our broadcast live on Monday night or Tuesday morning in some areas of the world at bit.ly forward slash trauma recovery U. And the capitals do matter there. So there we go. All done. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. You're welcome. Um, I'm hoping, let's see. Mostly everyone that was here live that's always here has said goodnight to us. And 
Um, let me see. Yep, I think as of about five minutes ago. So good night, everyone. Um, if you would like to come and hang out with us on a Monday with some awesome survivors, um, make yourself a Twitter handle. And it doesn't have to be your real name if you don't want it to be because if you are not even sure how to handle this whole survivor thing, like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to jump headfirst into this whole sexual abuse community. This is terrifying. Make yourself a Twitter handle. You can be, uh, you know, Blue Frog 429 unless that one's taken, of course, which I don't know if it is. But, you know, we will always welcome you in with love and kindness. And if you don't know how to set up a Twitter handle, um, go to twitter.com, go to their FAQ page. They have one of the greatest tips, FAQs. Um, they have one of the greatest websites ever for how to do things. They, they have their user interface and their user experience nailed. So um, we would love to see your questions. We would love to hang out with you. We would love for you to, um, to meet other people that are incredible and brave, just like you, who have survived similar circumstances. If that's something that you are ready to do, great. Um, you can also send us an email at nomoreshameproject at gmail.com, as Bobby um, just uh, posted on that on the screen share. Uh, we look forward to seeing you here next week as we discuss strength-based recovery. Bobby, what would you like to say to everybody before we say goodbye? Just that I'm honored that you were here tonight, and um, I'm so thankful I doesn't uh, plagued by technical issues. Yay! <laughs> I know. I, I'm really grateful too. If you all weren't here um, last week, um, I guess if you're in this part of the video, then you weren't here last week. But um, Bobby's video wouldn't work, and um, I was sort of just winging it by myself and going through all of all of the motions. I was wearing my Bobby hat and my Athena hat at the exact same time, and um, everybody knows that that's not very easy. So normally I'm the one, like early on about a year or two ago, my video would just not work sometimes and I would be like somewhere else, but I'd be able to like be plugged in, but not on. So, and I, I won't ever do that to you again, Bobby, if I can help it. Cause it was hard doing everything on my own. I'm like, I don't know the numbers to give you for rain and for the, for the Samaritans. And I don't like, that's not what I normally do. So, um, but we do, we just consider it an honor and a privilege. Um, you guys, I just want to echo what Bobby has said, which is thank you. Thank you for being the reason we show up every week. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for being committed to your recovery and thank you for being kind to the other survivors in our community. Please give this video a thumbs up if it has helped you. I'll leave a comment down below. Um, and again, if this is a replay and you were not here live and you just want to fast forward through everyone's stuff, then you can always just go down on any one of our videos and, and hit the little number and it will fast forward to just the one page so that you can um, get all your education in one little bite-sized piece. So. Um, but we love, I'm, I'm, I'm Athena Moberg, <laughs> and this is Bobby Parrish, and we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. See you next week.